Good afternoon. It is March the 23rd, 2018. Time to wrap up the day. The week, take a look at Monday morning. Hypothetical simulated performance results have certain limitations. Unlike an actual performance record, simulated results do not represent actual trading. Also, since the trades have not been executed, results may have under or overcompensated for the impact of any of certain market factors, such as lack of liquidity. Simulated trading programs in general are also subject to the fact they're designed with the benefit of hindsight. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profit or losses similar to those shown. Well, Trump has signed the bill. And uh, we have on talk radio all these people. This is it. It's over. He'll never get my vote again. Um, that remains to be seen. Uh, but we, the radio, the talk radio does know how to uh, exploit anger short term and create uh, enticing sound bites and uh, talk radio. So we'll see if that plays out. Uh, we came into this morning uh, with a recommended, uh, we thought there was at least one cell left in the market. Uh, wanted to sell the 59s to 64s, our number two sell zone. You were able to sell against 55. That was it. So uh, you're getting in the market on the short side in the 52 area. And it produced one, two, three trades. Great big trade right here. Um, with the uh, 25, 27 was potential support. Got us a good rally up to here. This is the uh, impact of the uh, Trump omnibus tax bill. And um, the uh, markets didn't like it. And the market sold. So it was pretty easy to predict that the market wouldn't like what Trump was signing for all the obvious reasons. Basically, um, he was bent over the barrel. Uh, he was uh, hamstrung by his own party once again. And we've talked about it from day one that uh, the Democrats will uniformly vote against anything that Trump proposes that could actually have uh, some beneficial results. And the Republicans probably will too. And his biggest enemies are the John McCain's, the Lindsey Graham's, uh, John Cornyn's, Lamar Alexander's, Susan Collins, etc. And that once again showed up today. So we're on that track. Um, and it, it's really, you know, if you don't understand the short side of the market, that day will come. And I don't know when it's, you know, it could be 10 years from now. But. The chaos that's associated with collapse, uh, we, we know how to prosper under those conditions. And it's sad, but we do. So um, none of us fret or waste time or energy worrying about something that we can't control, but can take advantage of. Uh, so 2,600, so one of those round numbers stops below 2,600 would be the play. Uh, if we get through that, 25.87, at 85.87 area would be the next stop. And uh, I think we got a shot for stops below 2,600, Sonny. F1 on the E-mini. Lower high, lower low, sell it. F2 on the E-mini. sell it. Uh, so the news on Monday is Chicago Fed National Activity Index, Dallas Fed numbers. Nobody really pays a lot of attention to that. Two-year auction comes on Monday. So right here we got a pretty clean break in the market at 15. So if the market were to close right here, right now we're trying to sell 14s to 19s, 24s to 29s, and apply for stops below 2600 buying 96 to 01 and 86 to 91 
Okay, Treasuries, today, um, even with the heavy selling in the E-mini, didn't explode and trade to the upside. Why? The Fed's raising interest rates. That's never good news. But selling in the E-mini has um, supported Treasuries today, as we thought. Next week is an auction week, the two-year. It's on Monday, five on Tuesday, seven year on Wednesday so right here we are um, and we'll probably go a little higher so 2327 sell 1 31 to 03 sell 2 on the buy side 13 to 17 buy 1 And five to nine by two. Looking at the 30 year, we'll make uh, 28, to, well, let's make the buck to 04, number one. 7 to 11, sell one. 15 to 19, sell two. Wednesday's announcement was not bullish for bonds. 20 to 24, number one. 13 to 17, buy one. 5 to 9 by 2. Gold, really, really strong. Haven't seen anything to explain the buying, but buying it is. Uh, so we're headed up. So we we saw 1350 yesterday. It was in the cards. Got it today. So the F1 screen says find a place to buy it. Strong profile. Volume and time are matched. So resistance is 50. 49 to 51, sell 1. 54, 56, sell 2. On the buy side, um, 46, 44, buy 1. And 40, 42, buy 2. Crude oil continues to defy gravity. Fundamentals, when bad news doesn't break a market, you buy it. Uh, strong close. Uh, don't know what's driving the market. I haven't seen any news. But something is. And um, products demand in the United States are 3% higher than they were in 2017. That's part of it. And uh, probably a pretty good feeling out there that Saudi Arabia and Russia at least will pay lip service to curtailing production.
So here we sit. So stops above 66. 66, 66 and a quarter, sell one. 50 to 75, sell two. 6750 is within reach, minor market number. Breakout came from 61, so 65 and a quarter, 6550 picks up this high volume area here. And 6475 for buy two. And looking at the euro. Inside day, trade it on the F1 screen. Have a neutral day here. Took out the initial balance on both sides. Those don't happen that often. Well, we got a seller at 24.50. 24.75, sell two. On the buy side, um, buying 15 to 25. And then 23.90, 24 even for buy two. That does it for this March the 23rd. Uh, next week I will, I should be back. Cell game uh, today. I mean, I'm my. Um, I'm just kind of floating. I'm, I'm I'm there, but I'm not attached. I'm not anchored. So, not a good idea for me to be making buy and sell recommendations. Y'all have a great weekend. I'm out of here.